Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of The Web Files. I'm Kristen Burt. Today we have a web series that you should be watching and it's called Tyranny. Come join us for a behind the scenes exclusive look with the cast and crew. In the year 1999, I was given a gift. A detailed vision of future events, which would occur sometime between 2011 and 2013. Now that time has come to pass, the world has fallen into chaos. As the wars continue, the collapsing economy has brought food shortages, riots, and a bioengineered pandemic, forcing those who want to survive into the hands of the committee. I ran the underground, which was preparing a last hope of a revolution against them. My name is Daniel McCarthy. You can hear some strange vibrations inside your head. Do you remember? What happened? That's what I need you to tell me. Well, welcome to the Web Files. We're sitting on the set of Tyranny, which is pretty amazing. Thank you. Tell everyone what Tyranny is about. Tyranny is about a guy who, in 1999, he volunteers for a neurological experiment. And during the experiment, something goes wrong, and later he finds out that he's had a vision of the future, something that happened between the years 2011 and 2013. Unfortunately, he forgets what his vision was. So now he starts to see pieces and fragments start to come back in his memory. So it's like puzzles and mysteries that he's trying to put together. As time goes on, he's uh, trying to figure it out. How long have you been working on Tyranny? It started mainly back in 1998. I saw the movie The Game in 1997, and then I went on a trip to Prague with my friend from college. And while we were walking around in Prague, there were all the movie posters for The Game, and we kept talking about it. And that kind of started the basis for this idea of like, what if someone could really do this? What if a corporation could really do this? And what would be the benefit? And I ended up making a short film based on that idea that summer in 1998 called The Man from Snow Globe. So I thought, well, let's make it about this guy that is trying to figure out his place in the world and using mathematical models and marketing strategies. And he determines that everything in his whole life, it's like he's inside of a snow globe. It's all been fixed and figured out for him in advance and, and he has no choice. It's, it's an illusion. I have no idea what's going on right now and I'm going out of my mind. Now we're in the set here. Just talk a little bit about this because this is Episode one really starts here, doesn't yeah. it? It starts out with him floating in this tank. And I really actually did float in this tank. We really did fill it up with water. It's funny. I mean, these sets are actually working props. Well, we want to see more of the set. So yeah. let's head to the next location. All right, so what is this utilized for? Uh, well, this particular spot was uh, used when the doctor was interrogating me. Do you remember? Who are you? Dr. Malik. How many locations within this building do you have? So far in the series, we've shot the art scene, most of the art scene in here, the interrogation scene here. That dentist chair over there, that was the lab where I, I was wearing the helmet. The kitchen has already been two sets, Kurt Gladwell's office at Stanford University, as well as the Atlantis bookstore. So constantly utilizing every sort of nook and cranny of this space. Yeah, and this place is filled with props. It's hard to keep all this stuff. People come over and think I'm a major pack rat. So I have a question with casting. Now, was Olga part of the series back in 2004? Yeah. Pre-Bond. Yeah, I met her in 2000, and she was 20 years old, a model, and I was shooting a, a behind the scenes video of her doing some modeling and during lunch we got to talking and she says, John, someday I want to be a movie star. And I said, hey, yeah, yeah, I'm making a movie. I'll, I'll put you in my film. Put you and in I'm my thinking, film. And I'm thinking, yeah, I'm doing you a favor. Wait, do you see what Daniel Craig's gonna do with you? You know, it's funny because I told her, I said, you'd make a good spy. Now, how many cities did you shoot overseas? Oh, well, let's see, there was Tokyo, Cairo, a couple different cities in Spain, and then I went up to the Arctic, and London, and Prague, of course. 
Now, we're going to talk a little bit about the look of the show because it's very specific. We've talked about the set, but we haven't really talked about shooting it. So we are going to bring your crew in, I guess, to talk a little bit about that. All right, John, you brought in the entire crew. I can't believe we all fit in this room. Garrett, welcome. Thanks for having us. <laughs> yes, uh, all one of you. I mean, it's, it's really amazing what you achieve with just the two of you as crew. You hear that's called a sensory experience. It's got a really specific look. What's the first thing you remember? about what led to this event. Isabel. Can you be more specific? My wife. Well, John always says it's like uh, we're shooting a bow and arrow at a target. And, but you have to shoot the arrow and then run out and move the target. <laughs> and what are you guys shooting on? I'm shooting on a Canon 5D. It's pretty amazing what it's capable of. John actually has to make it look uglier than it really is to match older footage. And what are some of the challenges for you guys with a crew of two? It's sometimes it's sen uh, sensory overload when it was the driving the car scene. I'm actually driving the car, I'm thinking of the lines, I'm watching Karen, I'm watching myself, I'm thinking of the shots, and I'm like... I... You're too much multitasking. Yeah, and I'm 6'2", and fitting in the back of a Volkswagen yeah. with nice. gear. Yeah, that was, that was yeah. a little bit rough. You've really evolved because you were having the actors run the camera at certain points when you were shooting overseas. Yes, yeah, so this is a major You've step grown. up in crew. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Not that they didn't weren't doing an awesome job, but like now we actually have a dedicated crew member. <laughs> it's almost a luxury at this yeah, point. Yeah, totally. I feel like even though there's those setbacks of um, it takes us longer to set up, I think in the long run we end up saving time because um, we're so mobile. Now you guys are exclusively on Coldcast right now. And you can check out all the episodes on tyranny.tv. Perfect. Exactly. Well, you guys, I want to thank you so much for joining us here on The Web Files. This has been really an incredible experience just to see where you shoot. And I mean, the location is so unusual compared to other web series that we've seen. So thanks for inviting us here today. Thank My you. pleasure. We want to thank John and Garrett for letting us dive into the whole world of tyranny. This episode of The Web Files is now closed. I'm Kristen Burt. See you next time. So right now, it's, we're just in your this living room. This is just my living room. Fantastic. <laughs>